Now we're going to take a look at the array reduce method. It's another one that uses a callback function the same way that map, for each, and filter do, and we looked at those in previous videos. But this one also has an additional parameter, an initial value that gets passed in and used by the callback. Now the reason that this is different, the reason that there's an initial value, is that array.reduce wants to change your array of numbers, your array of strings, whatever your array contains, it's going to give you back one single value. So we're going to carry out a function on every one of the elements inside the array and there's going to be a resulting value. So if I have an array of numbers for example like I've got here, I could do something like call array reduce and I'm going to find the sum of all these numbers. If I wanted to go through this list of movie titles and find out alphabetically which one comes first or which one comes last, I can do that with array reduce because it's one answer out of all the possible values. So let's do the example with the numbers here first of all. I'm going to do create a variable called sum and on my numbers array I'm going to call the reduce method. It's going to have a callback function and then it's going to have an initial value. I want to get the sum, so I'm going to start with 0 as my value, because I'm going to take 0 and then I'm going to add 12, and then I'll take the sum of those two, pass it in, and I'll get that result added to 34, and then I'll get the result of that and add 56 to it, and so on. So 0, this is my initial value, and I'm going to be passing that 0 in, and then the item itself. So we're going to return whatever gets passed in, which the first time is going to be the 0. So this 0 is going to get passed in, added to the first number, which is 12. 0 plus 12 is 12. So the second time reduce gets called, 12 will be the value that gets passed in. And then 12 will be added to 34. So we'll get 46 is the answer, and then that gets passed in, and so on. So if I run this now, there we go, total is 271, all of these numbers. And we can console log if you want. We're not restricted to just that single line of code in our function, so I can write out what the value was that was passed in, and what the item was. There we go. So. 0 was passed in and added to 12. And then 12 was passed in and added to 34, which gave us 46. 46 added to 56 gave us 102. 102 added to 78 gave us 180. 180 plus 91, 271. So, simple enough with basic mathematical operations. Just remember, with the reduce, you're taking an entire array and reducing it to a single value. With our movie titles, I wanted to find the first one alphabetically. So you can take any two strings and compare them in the same way that you would a number. So I can say if 5 is greater than 6 or if 7 is less than 12. Those are comparison. And with the greater than or less than operators, I can do the same thing with strings. What it will do is it will compare the Unicode value. So the, the ASCII value, the numeric value of the first letter of each string and see which one's greater. If it's the same, it moves on to the second letter and so on. So let's do that with our reduce function. We'll take movies, reduce, here's our callback function, and we're going to need something to use as a starting value. So we could arbitrarily pick any Unicode value whatsoever. I'm going to pick that Unicode value, and so the current value and the item. So what I want to do is I'm going to compare what gets passed in with the name of the movie. And whichever one is less, therefore coming first alphabetically, that's the one that's going to get passed along. It's going to replace this value as the next current value. So I need to return one or the other. I have to compare current and item so if current is less than item, 
and I'm going to use a ternary operator here. And if current is less than item, I'm going to return current, else I'm going to return item. And run this. Here we go. First movie is Almost Famous. So looking through here, okay, Almost Famous starts with an A, so it looks like it's a good chance that it is alphabetically the first, but it's the last one. So just to make sure that this is working, let's put another movie title starting with an A at the very beginning here. Run this again. There we go. First movie is Alien. So it is comparing the two, and it's giving me whichever one is lesser. I'm going to comment out that one, and I'm going to write out what I'm comparing inside this function. So I'm comparing current to item. And current and item are just variable names that I arbitrarily chose. They are not required variable names, if you're wondering that. And let's put something, um, something starting with a B at the beginning. Uh, actually, let's just move this one up to the beginning. There we go, something from the middle of the alphabet. Okay. We're running this. There we go. So here's what I'm comparing. My Unicode character, 0434, that's the Russian letter D, and I'm comparing that to layer cake. Well, layer cake has a lower Unicode value. The L in layer cake has a lower Unicode value than the D, so it's going to win out in that little competition comparing them. Layer cake gets passed on compared to Star Wars. It still wins. It still wins against Star Trek and Jaws. Jaws compared to Jurassic Park. Jaws wins out. Jaws wins out against Gross Point Blank, and then Gro sorry, Gross Point Blank wins out against Jaws. Compared to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, it wins out for a couple turns until we get to Dog Soldiers. It wins out until we get to the Seas for Close Encounters and Casino Royale to Almost Famous. And then at the very end, Almost Famous takes it as the first movie alphabetically from within our array. And that is how array.reduce works.